Good morning guys! Uno e due computer pronti per registrare oggi la diretta di Harley Davidson dove presenteranno la Pan America e quella che speriamo essere la nuova moto custom touring in arrivo, ovvero la Revival. Ora basta parlare e lanciamo la sigla e poi vi lascio direttamente alla diretta di Harley Davidson. Ciao ragazzi! Grace of your lineage. You stand on the backs of those who came before you. The defiant ones. Outlaws of adventure. Explorers of the unknown. Harley Davidson defined the motorcycle. But it was you who challenged the destination and rode across comets. You who climbed uncharted mountains who raged through desert sand and faced the fury of ice and snow in the hope of discovering beauty unknown. You are the Pathfinders whose hearts beat to discover new terrain and to find yourself all over again in the emptiness of an open road. It has always been your relentless spirit for adventure that's pushed us to take you further. Why call it adventure touring when it's human nature to seek beyond our limits? I am the Pan America, forever exploring. And I am here by the grace of my lineage. I am Harley Davidson. what it's about, look at this. It's been years that I've wanted to do this. I've known it's coming, and uh, I just want to thank Harley for giving me the opportunity to direct the piece that you just saw. It means the world to me. I mean, my job is to act and uh, direct and, you know, filmmaking, and sometimes you're playing other characters, and uh, it's great, but there's nothing like doing your passion, which is ride motorcycles. And to be introducing this bike for Harley, and had the opportunity to make a film for them. I wanted to show something that showed the lineage, where it all came from, how we took those bikes, how we pushed them further, uh, whether that be up a mountain, through the desert, just pushing it to all speeds and, and taking something that Harley created. And it's really the connection between the human spirit and our adventure for touring. And this is finally here, it's the next generation. So those new pathways, and this is definitely the trailblazer right here. So um, thank you very much, Harley. I love you. With a street bike, you fight to keep it clean, but I almost want to leave the mud on this motorcycle. <laughs> but I guess that's all part of the adventure touring thing. It's about kind of leaving scars on the motorcycle and bits of history. I'm looking pretty good here. Got to ride over and see the boss. See if I can talk Jochen into taking a, another ride with me. I'd love to go out and get this thing muddy again. How you doing? Let's, Let's do it.
Wow, what a day. Oh, man. Awesome. That was great. What ride more did you try? I was in off-road mode. I played oh. with sport mode a little bit, and then we got into some gravel, and I, I actually put it in like the rain mode. Uh, off-road mode was the My best. My favorite. So we're getting the fire going? Yeah, let's do it. With the introduction of the Pan Am, you know, there's gonna be people out there that are gonna say, you know, Harley Davidson is maybe a little late to this game. And, you know, my answer to that is, this is our game. This is the game that we've always played. From our earliest inception of the motorcycle and how the founders used it to prove its metal, it's been part of us, it's, it's in our DNA. At the end of the 19th century, you have to remember roads across the United States aren't like they are today. They were not geared for motor vehicles. They were designed for horses, horse-drawn vehicles. Uh, you commonly had roads that were nothing more than sand. You'll see it in the Harley-Davidson marketing literature. Their sales were in competition with a horse and buggy. And so uh, they were saying, you know, don't buy a horse. A Harley-Davidson can get you down that same trail. It can do the same thing and get you to the place where a horse would and you don't have to feed it, you don't have to clean up after it, and there's just so many more reasons why a Harley-Davidson is, is a better choice. You know, that's where trail riding comes from. It's from getting on horseback and actually riding trails, and that's where a motorcycle was one step ahead of an automobile where it needed two trails to get down. Uh, the motorcycle could go down that single trail, and it could get you back to your favorite fishing hole or get you to that favorite hunting spot where, you know, where the bucks hit out. It's what the early founders really set out to do. Uh, you know, you kind of had a perfect storm. You had an engineering guy, you had a, a manufacturing guy, you had a dealer guy, and then you had a marketing guy. And he said, if we can prove that our motorcycle is far superior to every other motorcycle out there by being able to handle whatever train under whatever conditions, that's what people are gonna want. Now, motorcycle touring, a lot of people think is kind of a, a new concept. And believe it or not, the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel actually had their motorcycle tour of the woods that dates back to 1907. You know, Lake Geneva is, what, 45 miles away from here. But, you know, that was a day-long trip on a motorcycle uh, in those days. There's one adventure touring story of uh part that they had developed called a two-speed hub that, among other places, got its testing with a customer who was crusading in Wisconsin to help prevent the spread of tuberculosis. His name was Ted Worley, and he was an avid outdoorsman. And one of the things he loved about his job is it got him out in the outdoors as much as possible. And he ends up uh, writing a pamphlet on behalf of Harley-Davidson called Camping Hints When Touring with a Motorcycle. And it's everything from how to set up your tent, there was a recipe for soup. There's even a, a great illustration showing how he set up the luggage on his motorcycles. By 1920, we're a global company. But we've been selling since 1913 in Japan. We've been selling in Brazil. We've been selling in Australia, Europe. And so we start seeing these letters flow into the company. Here's my trip to the Panama Canal. You see, you know, Harley Davidson's and elephants and, and all these exotic things. There was nothing holding you back. Uh, you know, as long as there was ground and, you know, the motorcycle could conquer it. We talk about on-road or off-road. Well, what's a road? You know, to a motorcycle, what isn't? When the sport model comes out, a good amount of the advertising talked about these kind of competitive rides they did up a mountain road. There was a fellow by the name of Charles F. Barrett, and he entered his Harley Davidson, and he beat out every automobile in the Utica AAA Auto Club hill climb, and he beat them handily. And after that, all the auto clubs, including the AAA, outlawed motorcycles in their hill climb. In 1930, William H. Davidson, who is the son of William A. Davidson, one of the co-founders of the company, wins the Jack Pine Enduro. And this was an endurance run held in the Lower Peninsula of Michigan. And by that point, it had grown to have quite a reputation. One of Harley Davidson's dealers, a woman in Detroit, Michigan, Dot Robinson, would talk about you know having competed in the Jack Pine 
Uh, she talked about, you know, scratches on the arms from tree branches. And the jack pine was some of the most grueling terrain that anybody could ride. She competed several times, won it twice. World War II comes along and it, it changes literally everything for everyone. They took what was the W, as it was called, civilian model and made a lot of adaptations to it. They were specifically designed to handle conditions that the military used things like Jeeps for. It has stronger forks, it's got stronger handlebars, it has a skid plate on it, it's got an air cleaner that has an oil bath so it can handle dusty conditions. Uh, luggage racks and gun scabbards and ammo boxes, they all get incorporated so they can handle that terrain. And they would get letters from servicemen serving in the Pacific, servicemen serving in Europe saying, I was a rider before the war, or maybe they weren't, but they're riding a Harley Davidson in the military now, and they would report that it's handling it well, and it's really a reliable bike. And You know, those guys wanted reliable vehicles. They didn't want to get stuck anywhere. You never knew when you would get in a tight spot. So as the interstate system comes into play after World War II, and we start seeing the advent of the superhighway in the United States, you know, Harley has to really pivot. You're starting to make motorcycles that can travel at a higher rate of speed. They can carry uh, multiple passengers and more gear. People are gonna go further distances. You know, what might have been a day trip that was 60 miles away, now, you know, you might go 300 miles. You know, in 1956, we sell our first true touring motorcycle where it's sold is the fact. It's the king of the highway. And you get saddlebags, you get a windshield. It's got an extra thick buddy seat so you can take a passenger along. You know, the rise of off-road or motocross racing in the, the 1970s was a huge boom. And we made uh, scramblers, we made SX 125s, 175s, which were off-road. Probably the most grueling uh, motorcycle race in North America is the Baja 500. Well, a lot of people don't even realize that A, Harley competed in it, and B, they don't even know that we won it one year. Um, and this is usually run by dune buggies and jeeps and you know, so to win that was really a huge thing. So, you know, we were involved in it and uh, at the time, you know, Harley Davidson decided to take a, really a different course and concentrate on more heavyweight touring motorcycles. Everyone always said, well, you got to make this trade-off. You're either going to be an off-road bike or you're going to be an on-road bike. And to me, that never really made sense that it had to be this dichotomy of one or the other. And it was like, hey, there's an opportunity here. You know, we, this is like a missing link. Frankly, we own the Grand American Touring market. We are the market. If you think about power that the company was able to harness and the desirability that the product had at its core through the early 90s all the way through the 2000s, we love that customer. That customer's been incredibly special to us and important to us. But we've got to start thinking about a new customer, too. Like, this is something that should have been in our lineup. And all these things came into place, and we eventually said, yeah, let's do this, man. We can absolutely own this. The way we approached Pan Am was to go off and decide what kind of motorcycle we wanted to build. What are the targets? What are the requirements? What are the things that are going to delight real advocates, people that really have this in their blood? We want to deliver all the expectations that those customers expect. We want to do it better than the competition, and we want to do it in our own way that's unique. It has to be the Harley way. So that's where the tension was, because a lot of people thought when we said it's got to be the Harley way, it's going to be heavy, it's going to be loud, it's going to be it's going to have flames on it. And that's not what we were talking about. We were talking about individuality and something that people hadn't done before. You kind of have to find that space in between evolution and revolution. And we had a little more freedom with, with uh, Pan America because there was nothing that came before it.
Whenever you do something that's kind of radically different and unexpected, you're gonna shake people up. I remember telling leadership at the time, I said, this is exactly what we want. It's the right bike, it's the right shape, it's the right moment, and it's kind of the right mindset right now with the company. It took a story. I said, hey, first of all, when the company started, there were no roads. That's a great, nice foundational chunk to kind of build this whole thing off of. Second thing was the, the way that we supported two world wars with products that basically invented adventure touring. And then, I mean, we won Baja. And if you think about America and just the vast amounts of land that are unpaved, like this countryside around me, there's just a huge opportunity here. And it is touring, you know, and we kind of invented Grand American Touring. And the fact that you're being so polarized about it is a really healthy reaction to have. I, I believe iconic, innovative design scares the hell out of people at first. And if we don't have that, that means we haven't pushed it far enough. Being an industry-leading company doing touring puts us in a really great position to build an adventure touring bike. Because it's an adventure touring bike, because it's a tool, because function absolutely has to deliver, we were lockstep with engineering. The acuity to actually put that engineering into the bike to make it a superior motorcycling experience was a lot harder than uh, people might have thought. It was ground up and it started with the powertrain. We're not really into covers and decorative things that you put over and hide. We're really more into the functionality. What you see is actually what works. And that's why we believe that the engine should be out front and proud. The concept here was to design the engine such that it was stiff enough to be the central member of the frame which gave us the opportunity to make the whole motorcycle lighter. And that, as a designer, allows you incredible flexibility because you're not stuck to a frame. You can actually design from the engine out. It's shaped so that you can take high-speed turns and really get a grip on it. From a dynamic standpoint, the weight needs to be low and it needs to be in the right places. How do we optimize our frame weight to get the stiffnesses we need? There's so many areas that have to come together to make this thing work right. It's really the definition of a massive team effort. Once we started putting people on them, then we had the problem that everybody in the company wanted to get on them. At our Arizona test facility, we built a whole new section just for testing off-road adventure touring bikes. We developed nine different criteria that we look at for off-road development, dirt roads, how the bike behaves, how it slides, how it doesn't, where the grip is, where it isn't. So all the road bike knowledge that we had just came on top of that. We spent a lot, a lot of time and effort to make sure that the bike really did everything. impressed with giving the engineers the freedom and creativity to come to this space and they've really expressed themselves. They've found it an, almost like an intellectual challenge and they've done an exceptional job of really reinterpreting adventure touring for Harley Davidson. This powertrain is a home run for us. This bike guy has a top speed of 135 miles an hour with cargo. Crazy competent on the road carves switchbacks like a full-fledged street bike. You know, so hot off the line that people are gonna have to use a glue to hold onto the handlebars. This is a new genre for Harley-Davidson. We plan to build upon this platform going forward. A product that's coming out very soon, the 1250 Custom Cruiser. It's got a fistful of torque and power, just like the Pan America. The suspension system has got top-of-the-line balance-free forks with semi-active top-of-the-line damping a balance-free rear cushion with also some active damping control as well as the adaptive ride height. So adaptive ride height is a first for the motorcycle industry. 
it lowers the motorcycle as you come to a stop, which makes it much, much more confidence inspiring for anyone. And then once you take off, the system automatically builds up pressure and, and pumps itself back up to your normal height. I spent a day on a regular Pan America with a regular suspension. I had then hopped on an adaptive ride height bike that I had to do some other work on. And that was the moment I was like, oh, wow, yeah, <laughs> this is a game changer. People are gonna love this. With a push of a button, I can make it a very sporty bike. If I wanna make it a Luxo Cruiser, I can do that too. I feel what sets us apart is the way that Harley does customization. We've thought of everything. Titanium exhaust, lightweight materials that are durable. We partnered with Michelin on our knobby tires, the auxiliary lights, um, for that nighttime riding or for the canyon riding. We offer guards for those rugged terrains. We offer three different luggage solutions. Our sport luggage, docking mounts right on the vehicle. The aluminum luggage for those off-road riders that are camping. It's all about maximizing space. Soft luggage bags for those ultra rugged adventures. What we do is try to balance out from a look standpoint as well as the functionality of it. PNA is a must have for Harley Davidson as a whole because that's part of our DNA is customization and being able to, you know, provide things for our customers to be able to improve the bike and their experience. The finishes are matte sheen, they got texture, we went with powder coat because it's durable. We really wanted to design and develop something really tactical and functional for this consumer and rider. I think from a styling and color material finish, graphic standpoint, we always look to the past. You know, Harley has such a, a strong brand identity that we have to look back and, you know, make sure we're nodding to it or also just inspire from it. I mean, Harley Davidson is known for these great leather jackets and our great leather technology, but the adventure touring rider is different. In order to hit the ground running with really compelling product that met these customer needs, we had to partner with someone that had the right experience. So working with Revit, they are at the top of the list. They are experts in this field. They make fantastic riding gear. Gloves, helmets, boots. We offer from head to toe to fingertips everything that they're going to need. This is going to be all the gambit of weather. This is going to be a whole gambit of terrain. So we put that focus on a textile garment in that it brings us a real versatility in waterproofing, in venting. We've gone through a lot of work to, to really show up with the right stuff to you know, meet these customers at their expectations and then exceed them. It's this great combination of product design and transportation design and Harley-Davidson design. You know, the, the first cafeteria napkin sketches that led to this thing. Long, long journey, thinking about the history of the company and kind of creating the missing link, if you will. And now here we are in 2021 with everything that's going on in the world and all the change. And, you know, Harley Davidson is back off road. To be a small part of that story is, you know, that, that's, that's pretty exciting. The paved road is one thing. It has its poetry and its moments and its romance, but it doesn't get you here, you know? Thanks for showing me around your neighborhood. Anytime. Spikes were phenomenal. They really were. So how was Kenya? How was riding a Pan America in Kenya? It was great. I mean, you know, I rode it nonstop for a few hours into a rainstorm, into the heat. Yeah. Gravel off-road sand, all the riding modes, and it was you yeah. know, really fantastic. Even right. in, at night, you know, in that landscape, you have elephants and giraffe and everything showing up <laughs> at the same time. Incredible. No, it was quite, quite amazing. After a couple of days, get to know the bike, and it's just, yeah. you know, for the power it has, it's incredibly agile. Yep. yep. It's a proper Harley machine that you ride through thick and thin. I thought, you know, the last couple of days, just the more I rode it, the smaller and smaller the bike became. It does. It just feels lighter yeah. and more agile. And you just gain confidence because it's really, it's very forgiving. 
ride modes just compensate, make you feel like you're a, a much better rider than and you It's are. a very sleek bike, I mean, it really is. Yeah. yeah. And it's the first adventure touring bike made in America. It is. Yeah. This bike does everything. This is the start. We have great plans to expand on Pan Am and mm -hmm. lots of innovation waiting. This is just a launch into a whole new dimension for the company. Yeah. Well, cheers to a great day. Thank you so much for showing me those incredible trails. It was fun. Trails. We rode quite a distance. Yeah. I mean, this, we, we had you know proper touring, but then yeah. just off the beaten track. And yeah. it's just a yeah. natural expansion from Grand American touring into off-road touring. To me, it's part of the history, it's part of the legacy, it's part of the DNA of Harley-Davidson. And you've got to innovate, but you preserve the past as well. And yeah. that's what Harley-Davidson has always done so well. It's true. That's what we're doing with this incredible yeah. bike, you know. I think it's ready. What do you think? I think it's ready, absolutely. So let's, let's give do it this, to the huh? world. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, man. Let's do it. So, Jochen, you brought your guitar? <laughs> <laughs>